Hey, what's up? Leron here. Hope you're doing super well. I want to show you a bit of a common issue I see with many of my students uh, when it comes to working the paint on the palette. Okay, so this is how you handle paint with the brush on the palette as well as in the water that you use in the water reservoir. My bucket is a little too big for the shot for this angle, so I'm using just a, a plastic cup. Okay, and I want to show you. So something very common I see people make is first you dip right into the water and I see this all the time. So let me know if you do this in the comment down below. I see a lot of people working with the very tip of the brush to mix whatever they need. And so maybe they need a little blue. They work with that. Maybe they bring in a bit of more red here and it doesn't matter what you have on the palette. It's more about how you handle it and then I see them trying to paint, right, using this very small, let's say I have a big area to fill in, right, so look at how fast my paint runs out and I have to go back and again this very timid, timid mixing that can ruin many times your paintings. And you see, and then I do this again, especially with this hot pressed paper that is very unforgiving when it comes to an even wash. That can really hurt your results and then there's timid dipping, right? This thing that I have no idea where that comes from. I never had this problem, but I do see so many of my students doing that. So here's what I think is better. And it could be maybe related to being scared to uh, waste materials, right? Some stuff like that. But, but I really want to show you what I think is the better way to work on it. So one thing that happens when you use the tip of the brush, which is why this is a big problem, is especially for wet and wet. Let me show you. So I'm gonna pre-wet an area with a bit of paint and water, that's fine. But look at what happens if I just use the tip of the brush, just to get a bit of paint there. When I paint, here's what happens. The tip of the brush releases paint but the sides of the brush that aren't wet enough because I haven't dipped them in paint and water because I'm just working with the tip of the brush, the sides of the brush actually soak, absorb back the water. What you have is an uneven wetness throughout the brush tip. And I know that may seem like a bit of micromanagement, but it actually matters. And you'll actually feel the difference when you pre-wet an area and then you try especially for big areas. That's where this really becomes a problem. And you try to do some wet and wet and you end up lifting with the sides of the brush, you see? You end up almost lifting. So here's what to do instead. Dip the entire brush in the water. I go like this. I really dip it all the way. You can, you, it may be hard to see, but I dip it all the way. You can see it here, all the way. And then I'm wetting everything in my mixing area. I don't even care what's there, but I'm using the whole thing with the side of the brush, okay? And I'm wetting the whole thing with almost my entire brush. I do this. This helps the paint reach all the way to the base of the brush. And then I'll add whatever I want. Now, I think one fear people have is really wasting a lot of materials and, and going through a lot of paint fast. This is something that, one, I think you have to learn to let go. And two, and look at how much more even and easy it is to paint this way. And two, I would say, you're, some people are scared that now that you mix this big area of blue, you need to erase it to maybe mix a red. That's actually not true. Let me show you. You can simply overpower what's here. So if I use enough red, I can just overpower the mix and they kind of combine so I end up never wasting what was there. The leftovers are never wasted. I simply pre, uh, re-wet them and then use them for my next wash shape or whatever it is that I want, okay? So that's something I want you to have in mind uh, when it comes to mixing and handling paint on the palette. Again, go for the whole thing, the whole brush. Now, some people have become a little, you know, obsessed with like this and like that. Don't worry, it will, it will absorb all the way back as long as you push against the, the palette. You don't do this, right? This is what I want you to avoid. Just the tip of the brush. I see this a lot, okay? So just a quick tip to give you. Now, let me give you one more bonus tip. I wasn't planning on, but now I remember that I do see this a lot too, is this idea of when you paint, instead of simply filling in the shape, I see a lot of people doing this. 
and it actually does nothing but leave maybe a little mark or maybe sometimes I see people do this like there's and especially again on hot press paper you really see the difference you see all of these marks um, where you can just go like that so one thing I would do is you don't have to but I would try and train myself to simply fill in the shape um, so let's say this shape here and I've done this before I've shown you this technique here but I just want you to fill in the shape right don't don't look at it as a coloring book and obsess over like doing it like this one row at a time just go at it just fill the shape up same if you paint negatively around the shape just just go ahead and do it like that it's much better and the result will end up being a little more even that's what i find from my personal experience so i hope this quick tip helps i know it was a really fast one but i wanted to do an extra one this time uh, and i really hope you enjoyed this video and if you have don't forget to check out all of my courses link in the description box below especially the frustration free watercolor course if you're struggling with letting go with watercolor and really letting the paint do its thing and creating these beautiful effects and letting it go and letting it become beautiful on its own because watercolor is a magical medium check it out frustration free watercolor course if you're struggling more with realism and you're kind of that next step there's also the watercolor realism course i highly recommend you check these two out they'll help you get a loose free realistic result every single time i want to thank you so so much and i will see you in the next video